Sorry, my computer is thinking a moment. On this first slide, can you walk us through what we're seeing here? Yes, this is a summary of of search activity of interest observed in um, an account titled chad.daybell at gmail.com. Um, we started the review on October 1st, 2018 through the end of the production when legal process ended. And do you recall approximately when that would have been? I don't remember off the top of my head what the search warrant dates were, no. Um, is your recollection that they would have been around the same time as that phone attribution? Probably pretty close, yes. So again, when the children were still missing. Correct. And if we look at that first search there, um, and I say search, let me back up. When we look at the first date there, can you walk us through what those searches were? Yes. On January 28th, 2019, there was searches for Ned Snyder, 1996 death, Louisiana. Ned Snyder, Louisiana. Ned Snyder, Louisiana, born 1951, died 1996, and bodies possessed after original occupant dies. And in looking at that, there's some semicolons. Um, why are those there? They were uh, separate searches or the way that the return comes in, it might might have been a search and then visiting a site, for example. So I didn't uh, separate out which ones. These just appear in the search history under different times, different searches, but on the same date. So several searches done on the same date for Ned Schneider. Correct. Why did that stick out to you? Uh, that is connected to other uh, portions of this investigation, wherein uh, Charles Vallow is, makes a comment right around this time. Judge, I'm going to object at this point. Basis. Well, it's hearsay. And in addition, Judge, I, there's no foundation to establish where this witness gained that information. So at the very least, I'd like some foundation. And then uh, in addition, there's also a, a hearsay argument as well. Okay. It's sustained on grounds of hearsay. Calls for hearsay. Thank you, Your Honor. As part of this investigation, we talked earlier that originally you get involved in looking for missing children. Correct. And at some point that expanded to include other acts. Yes. And you mentioned previously that one of those acts was the killing of Charles Vallow. Correct. Through your investigation, did you learn, come to learn anything in relation to Charles Vallow and Ned Snyder? Yes. What did you learn in relation to the investigation? Judge, uh, I'm going to object at this point. There hasn't been sufficient foundation to establish how this witness learned of this information as it relates to Charles Vallow. Um, I will... investigation did you review multiple documents i did did you review multiple reports yes did you review phone data that was recovered i did in your review of reports and phone data did you come did you learn anything regarding the name ned schneider i did did you learn of the importance of the name ned schneider yes and what did you learn regarding the name Ned Snyder? Judge, again, I'm going to renew my objection on the basis of foundation. The only reference to knowledge was from reports or documents that are unidentified. If this witness is going to start relaying information about what she learned, I would think at least I'd be entitled to know what document she's referring to, where this, where this information was gained from. Mm -hmm. And Your Honor, may I respond? Go ahead, Ms. Blake. Your Honor, I think under the collective knowledge doctrine, she's already talked about it being a joint investigation that she reviewed and discussed the matter. And in relation to hearsay, it's not coming in for the truth of the matter. It's coming in for why she does what she does and why it's relevant to her through the investigation. I am going to overrule the objection and allow it to be answered at this point with sufficient foundation. Thank you. What did you learn in relation to the relevance of Ned Snyder and Charles Vallow? In reviewing police reports um, from Chandler Police Department and body cam footage, I believe from Gilbert Police Department, Charles Vallow makes comments that his wife, Lori Vallow, was referring to him as variations on the name Ned Schneider. Additionally, the name Ned and variations of the name Ned Snyder Schneider appear in Lori Vallow's iCloud accounts, uh, again, in reference to Charles Vallow. 
And then there's also one on their bodies possessed after original occupant dies. What was it about that that stood out to you? The concept of possession is uh, sort of prevalent through this investigation. This is, this, I believe, the first time we start seeing it where wherein Charles Vallow is, has become possessed by an entity named Ned. So um, again, I spoke yesterday about there being a lot of aliases in this case uh, on uh, with Chad and Lori, but also with um, some, some of the victims in this case where they are possessed by entities and therefore then be, being referred to by these names, um, Ned being one of them for Charles. And then the next search on there, um, can you read the date and what that search was? January 31st, 2019, Ned Schneider, Louisiana, obituary 1997. And did that stand out to you for the same reasons you've just explained? It did. And then the next one on there, can you read that and what the, the date and what the search was? March 6th, 2019, June 26th, star sign, are Cancer and Leo compatible? May 4 sign, Taurus and Leo compatible. And when we're looking at this one, um, what stood out about this particular search? Lori Vallow's birthday is June 26th, making her a Cancer. May 4th was Tammy's birthday, and making her a Taurus. And Chad Daybell's birthday is August 11th, which makes him a Leo. And then the search of the compatibility between those, those signs. And on March 6th of 2019, do you know if Tammy Daybell was still alive? She was. And you indicated Chad and Lori had met approximately when? October 26, 2018. And looking at the next search, can you read the date and talk a little bit about that one? May 5th, 2019, Malachite and eBay Malachite Jewelry. And what stood out about that to you? Chad and Lori uh, eventually ended up purchasing Malachite stone uh, wedding bands. And again, May 5th, was Tammy still alive? She was. What stood out about, or excuse me, on the next one, can you um, say the date and what that search was? June 1st, 2019. Hiplos or Iplos? And what caught your attention with regard to that search? In reviewing the uh, iCloud data and seeing text messages, it becomes apparent that um, Hiplos is another name, another entity name for Charles Vallow, replacing Ned. So both Ned Schneider and Hiplos or Iplos are names associated with Charles Vallow. Correct. And on June 1st of 2019, do you know if Charles Vallow was still alive? He was. How about the next search, the date and that search? July 9th, 2019, when you surprise someone with accusations. What caught your attention in relation to that search? That search was conducted two days before Charles was shot and killed. And then the next one, September, the one on September 8th, 2019, if you could talk about that search. SSW wind, and what is the definition of SSW direction? What caught your attention with that wind search? That search occurred the last day of Ty Lee Ryan's sighting, and we believe she was uh, burned and buried on his property the following day. When you... And we talked a little bit before. There were other searches in relation to this email. Is that accurate? Oh, absolutely, yes. In your review of those, were there any other searches for wind direction? Not that I saw. So this was not a common search done by uh, or associated with this email address? No. And then uh, the last one on there, if you could say the date and what that one is. October 8th, 2019, Rhode Island Area Code. And what was it about this search that drew your attention? 
As mentioned yesterday, there were numerous phones involved in this investigation. On October 8th, 2019, the 401 number we spoke about yesterday uh, was activated, which is the uh, 401 is the area code for Rhode Island. And as you said, we talked about that one yesterday. And is that one that um, Chad had let Lori know he was going to text her from that 401 number? That's correct. And did that occur around this same date? I believe it was the day after. Yeah, it was. I think there was an issue setting up the actual account. So it was the ninth, I believe, that he texted from his his known number to Lori saying he would call from a 401. And then if we move to the next slide, can you talk a little bit about what we're seeing on this slide? Again, it's a summary of search activity of interest observed in the lolly time forever at gmail.com account from March 7th, 2019 through December 14th, 2019. And that lolly time forever at Gmail, did you determine who the associated user is? Lori Vallow. And on this first search, can you talk about what we're seeing there? May 7th, 2019, Malachite. I think you've already talked about the Malachite. Um, I believe you said that's a stone that was originally, that ended up in Chad and Lori's wedding bands or wedding That's rings. correct. Yes. And when we look at the date there, was that date significant to you? May 7th? Or May 7th? Well, I guess let me ask it this way. On May 7th, was Tammy still alive? Yes, both both uh, Charles and Tammy were still alive at this point. And the next search, if you could talk about the date and what that one is. July 21st, 2019, Gerber Life Policy, Life Insurance for Children, the Grow Up Plan. And what was it about that search that stood out? Uh, we found it of interest seeing how children were missing and she was searching for life insurance for children. And to be clear, through the investigation, did we ever or did you ever determine if life insurance had been purchased for the children? No, we did not. And to the best of your knowledge, there was no life insurance? No. And the next search there and the date? July 26, 2019, Phoenix Pet Services. Craigslist, self-service dog, little angel service dogs, service dogs for sale, and offer up Phoenix. And there are several searches there. Correct. And they appear to be in relation to a service dog. That's correct. Why did that stand out to you in this case? Uh, JJ had a service dog at, at the time, um, and this, uh, this search occurred roughly two weeks after the death of Charles Vallow. So to attempt to sell a service dog for a child um, after his, the death of his father seemed of interest to us. And again, to be clear, JJ was still alive on July 26th. He was, yes. And the next search there? August 25th, 2019, wedding bands made of malachite. And I think we've talked a little bit about this. Did that stand out to you for the same reason? It did, although at this point, uh, Charles Vallow is no longer alive. Was Tammy Daybell still alive? She was. And the next search? September 20th, 2019, Kennedy Elementary, Rexburg, Idaho phone number, and define possess. And then if we also look at that next search... Um, can you read the date on that one? September 24th, 2019, Kennedy Elementary, Rexburg, Idaho, phone number. So for both the September 20th and September 24th, looking at that common search for the Kennedy Elementary phone number, why did that catch your attention? Uh, we believe that JJ died around the 22nd, 23rd. So these searches would have bookend, bookended that, that death. And do you know where JJ was enrolled in school uh, around the time of his death? At Kennedy Elementary in Rexburg, Idaho. And on the 20th, there was that one additional search, um, define possess. What was it about that that stood out? Similarly to the, the first uh, Ned Schneider 
searches that also included that possession, the, the concept of possession and deaths sort of going hand in hand was of interest. And this search occurred two to three days before, um, or I guess two to three days before JJ's last seen alive. That's correct. And then if we move down to the September 30th one, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, how to get the back seat out of my Jeep Wrangler. Jeep Wrangler JK rear seat removal, how to DIY. Yeah. Rear seat removal, how to DIY dash YouTube. And it looks like there's two, um, essentially two searches there. The way that it's written, it looks like it was probably a search and then clicking on like a YouTube link to show this, okay. if I remember correctly. And what was it about that that stood out to you? Tylee Ryan had a Jeep Wrangler as her everyday car. Um, at this point, she is no longer alive or we, her, we, her last um, proof of life has passed. Um, on September 30th, well, on, on October 2nd, Brandon Boudreaux is shot at from a Jeep Wrangler from somebody in the back seat or the rear area of a Jeep Wrangler, um, in Arizona. So the search of how to get the back seat out of my Jeep Wrangler by Lori, who has access to a Jeep Wrangler, Alex Cox is believed to have been the one that, uh, attempted to shoot, um, Brandon Boudreaux, who would have had access to this Jeep Wrangler. Additionally, on October 2nd, there are there's a video of a storage unit in Idaho where Chad and Lori are on surveillance video uh, storing a, a tire, uh, like a spare tire, and what looks like the backseat of a Jeep or some sort of vehicle in a storage unit just a few days after this search. And then if we move to the next search... October 2nd, 2019, Gilbert, Arizona News. What stood out about that search? Brandon Boudreaux was shot at in Gilbert, Arizona on October 2nd. And then the final search on here? October 22nd, 2019, wedding dresses, wedding dresses in Kauai. And why did that search or those searches draw your attention? Uh, the search was, again, it, um, wedding planning, um, and then also it's just days after Tammy's death and the same date as her funeral. And when you say just days after Tammy's death, do you know um, the day Tammy was pronounced dead? September, or I'm sorry, October 19th, 2019. So just three days after Tammy's death. Sure. That's correct. Oh, that's okay. And you also indicated this search was done on the same day as Tammy's funeral? That's correct. Do you know if Chad and Lori ultimately ended up getting married? They did. Do you know approximately when? In early November. If I may have just a moment, Your Honor. Yes. <clears throat> Your Honor, I have no further questions at this time. All right. Thank you, Ms. Blake. Mr. Pryor, cross-examination. Thank you, Judge. Uh, well, I'm not sworn, so uh, probably tact I mean, I'm tactical specialist is my title. <laughs> TS, if it's easier. Mr. Pryor, your microphone's not working. For Sorry, Judge. There you go. Blake pulled one on me here. Okay. I turned off the phone. Microphone. Um, uh, so you're not a, so how would you like me to refer to you again? I'm sorry. Uh, tactical specialist is my title. Okay. Is there an easier, uh, so I, yes, or 
T.S. Heidemann, would that be fair? That works, yes. Okay, okay. So um, T.S. Heidemann, it sounds from uh, your testimony that you've spent a considerable amount of time um, going over the evidence in this case. That's correct, sir. And you've familiarized yourself with a variety of topics. Those would include what happened in Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. What happened with Brandon Boudreaux? Correct. Okay, and what has happened here in terms of the facts and, and information? You've spent you've spent a bit of time, right? That's correct. Okay, so you're also aware that Chad Daybell is not implicated criminally in the death of Charles Vallow, Lori Vallow's fourth husband, correct? That's correct. And you're also aware that Chad Daybell is not criminally implicated in the attempted murder of Brandon Boudreaux in um, where, where Brandon Boudreaux was shot, correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. So before I... I I get into the, the the gist of what I'm going to talk to you about. I noticed that there's an FBI representative in the court today and that he has been here on a number of occasions watching the testimony. I can't attest to the specific number, but I've, I know he's been here several times. Is that your officer supervisor that's uh, here uh, supervising your testimony? He's not my direct supervisor, but I do work with him, yes. Okay, so what is he here for? Observation. Okay. Just to observe the... And at any time prior to your testimony, did you discuss with this FBI person um, anything you were going to say today since he's been watching the testimony for several days? We have not discussed it in... I mean, he's been a part of the investigation for quite a while, so he knows of it, but we haven't discussed in detail what I'm, what I'm testifying to now. And I appreciate you saying it that way. When you say he hasn't discussed it with me in detail, what I really want to know is he discussed it with you at all in any regard, in any capacity since you've uh, since this trial started. Your Honor, I'm going to object on relevance and beyond the scope of direct. All right. Well, the issue goes to the exclusionary order, and we need to just get to that point, Mr. Pryor, as to whether or not you believe there's been any violation of that. And, and in essence, Judge, what I'm asking is whether she's in any in any regard spoken to that representative of the FBI about this case. You can ask the question. That's the question I'm asking. Judge. About this case, yes, we have spoken about this case. And when did you speak? Over the last four years, okay. four and a half years. Did you speak in the last week during the t testimony of this case? Um, possibly. I don't remember off the top of my head if we had any other than if I was going to testify or Okay. Timing. And, and and what I'm concerned about is this, is that he's not your direct supervisor, right? That's correct. And there's no need to report to him, right? It's a co-situation. I don't necessarily need to report to him, but I do, as a courtesy, I am on his squad, but I have a different direct supervisor. So as a courtesy, I like to let him know if I'm okay. in the office All or right. not. And, yes. and I'm going to move on. I just wanted to, 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 to actually... Part of that was the judge's exclusionary rule and whether yeah. or not you folks are communicating about this case. And your answer is maybe a little bit, but not in any significant way, right? Not in any significant way, not beyond what we've talked about in the last four plus years, no. And even though this FBI officer isn't your direct supervisor, you're just talking in general about this case, right? I can't say in the last week or so if we have or not any details. I, nothing that stands out, no. Okay, so you don't remember whether you talked to somebody or not in the last week about a very important case in your life. Is that what you're telling me? Your Honor, me? I'm going to object as argumentative and asked and answered. Sustained. Okay. Now, um, you identify that you were um, looking into uh, uh, attribution information and looking for Google searches as, re as it related to this case, correct? That's correct. Okay, now you know the circumstances regarding J.J. Vallow's um, death, correct? As much as I can. As much as you can, <laughs> yeah. right. And you have an approximate date as to when you believe J.J. Vallow was killed, right? Correct. And what date was that? Uh, well, the last proof of life was September 22nd, 
2019 in the morning. We have a photo of that date. So somewhere between then and approximately September 23rd. All right. So the, the, the afternoon of September 22nd until the morning of September 23rd, correct? Is that fair? Yeah. Morning, early afternoon. Correct. Yes. Morning, early afternoon of September 23rd. I don't remember the exact time. Oh, it's okay. Yes, those, those time frames. Well, this is a problem. Our court reporter is never going to be able to keep up when you're talking at the same time and you're both actually doing it. So please wait for an answer, wait for a new question and don't talk over each other. Thank you. Yes, sir. So if I, and, and please don't let me misrepresent your testimony. You believe that JJ Fallow was murdered the afternoon of September 22nd up until either late morning or sometime early September 23rd, correct? That's correct. And at the time, are you aware of the four people who were around J.J. Vallow at that specific time? Uh, the four, what four people? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Well, that's what I'm going to, I'm trying to get to. You, you, you're aware that J.J. Vallow was allegedly murdered either in uh, an apartment of Lori Vallow's or a close proximity to that. Do you agree with that, right? I don't know that we know exactly where he was killed, no. Okay. But you do know that J.J. Vallow was um, was being watched by Alex Cox that day and that evening of the 22nd, correct? Uh, partially, yes. Okay. And you know that Melanie Gibb was there on the evening of the 22nd at Lori Vallow's apartment, correct? Uh, that is correct, yes. And you know that David Warwick was there on the 22nd on the evening of the day or the day that J.J. Vallow was murdered, right? Yes. Okay. And so we have Lori Vallow, correct, correct. on that day? Yes. Alex Cox on that day, correct? Correct. Melanie Gibb on that day, correct? Correct. David Warwick on that day, correct? Correct. So I'm I'm having some difficulty with you bringing up these Google searches. And this is why I'm having some difficulty is you're talking today about searching these peoples and, and talking about events. And we'll get to these events in a minute. I don't see any Google searches on Melanie Gibb or David Warwick. And why is that? Your Honor, I'm going to object as argumentative. Overruled. Why don't I have any Google search information on Melanie Gibb or David Warwick? I'm not aware if, I, I don't know off the top of my head, if any legal process was served on those individuals or not. Well, and, and this is what I'm having some difficulty with. This is what I'm struggling with. Runner, objection to the narrative. If he wants to ask a question. I'll sustain that. Just okay. questions, Mr. Pryor. Okay. Well, if David Warwick and Melanie Gibb were present for the murder of J.J. Vallow, why aren't we looking into their Google searches? I, I don't actually write the search warrant, sir, so I, okay. I'm not sure if they were who would have done that. Okay. But it's common knowledge that they were at least there, right? For a partial time, yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, you're also aware as part of your investigation that, um, and we can discuss when we think this took place, but Chad Dable and Lori Vallow were having a relationship, correct? Yes, sir. And they were engaged in a romantic relationship. Yes, sir. And it, it may have been when Charles Vallow was alive. It may have been after that. But we do know that after Charles Vallow's death, Lori Vallow and Chad Dable were in a relationship. That's correct. And Chad was still married to Tammy Daybell at that time, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. When someone's in a relationship and you're looking at Google searches, could some of these Google searches be explained that he's, he's trying to hide his extramarital affair with Lori Vallow? I, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand that. Well, let me, let me go over it this way.
You saw on 3-6 of 2019, May 6th of 2019. Would you like me to put this up so we can look at this? Would that be easier for you? Sure. Yeah. Oh. You know, tell me how I operate this. That's going to be the problem. Which exhibit is this? this Judge, I don't have the, the number on it. It was what Ms. Blake was just talking to as part of the attribution and the, the Googles. That 184A? I think so. Okay, 184A then, I'll note, uh, not the PowerPoint, but the printout copy can be displayed to the witness and published for cross-exam. And please excuse me, uh, at my age, technology is, is, is just getting uh, hooked up to Bluetooth is a challenge for me. Um, So we're looking at 3-6 of 2019, right? Correct, yes. Okay. Now, before I, I start, one of the things I have some difficulty with is we don't know who did these Google searches, right? Correct. I cannot say that I witnessed Chad Daybell type these into a search bar, but they somebody with access to the Chad Daybell account so if there was conducted searches, yes. Judge, I'll, I'll pause. I'm sorry. Um, the next question is already in my head, and I've, it's, it's just getting it to spit out, and, and I'll try to control myself a little bit. Um, so you put this off of a computer at, at Chad Daybell's house, right? I reviewed a search warrant return for... Um, from Google is what okay. I was looking at. So not the computer directly, no. So other than the time when Tammy Daybell passed away, are you aware that there were three or four other people who were living in Chad Daybell's house at that at the time? I don't know. It's, I think at least one, at least one child, but there could have been more. It's possible, okay. yes. Okay. So we don't know who who actually did these searches, right? Or from, I, I don't know from what device these were searched, no. I mean, it could have been a phone. You could be logging into from different devices, correct? Okay. So I I, I want to start, and, and we'll deal with the Ned Schneider ones in a, a minute here. Um, 3-6-2019, Tammy Daybell's still alive, right? Yes. Now... I'm I'm looking at that and and that on 36 2019 Chad Daybell was already in, in this relationship with Lori Vallow, right? Correct. So and I don't want you you don't have to say what you're thinking but it looks like June 26 star sign are cancer lead compatible and leo compatible. And also May 4 sign Taurus and Leo compatible. That's what that is, right? Correct. And what your testimony said is that it looks like someone's trying to see whether, if, if we assume that it's Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell in the, the Cancer and Leo, right? That's what you're sort of implying to this jury, isn't it? Well, based on the, the birth dates, May right. 4th and June 26th, correct? Yes. Okay. And based on the birth dates, May 4th of Taurus and Leo compatible as well, right? On May, on March 6th. Yes. So... If someone is trying to find out and is involved in an extramarital relationship and you're Googling whether or not your current spouse or your new girlfriend are compatible, that, that would be a reasonable explanation, would it not? Yes, sir. Okay. And then we go back and look at the Malachite eBay Malachite jewelry on, on May 5, right? Okay. And if you're talking to a someone that you're having an extramarital affair and they encourage you to say, oh, you know, someday maybe we could be together. I love Malachite. And she starts dropping hints. That could be an explanation for that as well, right? It could, but I believe that Chad's Malachite searches were, were began before Lori's. Oh, I, yeah, but I understand the searches. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I understand that. 
but why don't you show me the phone records where they talked about Malachite and that Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell discussed the issue of Malachite. Did you see any of those? I can't remember if there are in any um, text messages or not, but ultimately they purchased wedding bands that were Malachite wedding bands, yes. Okay, okay. And were you also aware that during this time there was discussion with Alex Cox and Zaluma Pastenez about Malachite as well? I don't remember off the top of my head, no, sir. Okay. All right. So we don't know whether this search for Malachite was a discussion between a boyfriend and a girlfriend or whether or not it was about Alex Cox and his future marriage to Zaluma Pastenez, right? Objection, Your Honor. States facts not in evidence and argumentative. Sustained. Okay. Now, the Ned Schneider issue. Uh, again, when was um, Charles Vallow murdered by Lori Vallow and Alex Cox? July 11th, 2019. Okay. So there was a discussion about this. And the first time you ever heard about Ned Schneider was when Charles Vallow brought it up in an audio recording about his wife at the time, correct? I believe that's correct, somewhere in and early the, January. And the date of that was when? I don't have the exact date of the body cam recordings or the police reports, but it's very, I believe it's pretty close to this time frame. Prior to that time frame, right? Yeah, right, right in that general time frame. Okay. So, uh, and in that general time frame, there was a discussion of Ned Schneider, right? Yes, sir. And at that point, you're, it's your position that um, Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell were involved in an extramarital affair at that point. Yes, sir. Okay. Did you happen to look into the fact that Charles Vallow and Lori Vallow called off their divorce and, to, and, and tried to reconcile their marriage in February of 2019? I do. Yes, I do remember that. I don't remember the time frame, but that sounds probably pretty close. Yeah. You don't remember exactly when in February, but they did attempt a reconciliation and, and and basically started their tried to renew their relationship, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So the idea of Ned Schneider, you didn't see anything else in Chad Daybell prior to January 28th of 2019, did you? Did I see anything? With, with Ned Schneider and, Char and Chad Daybell making any look into what Ned Schneider was all about, right? Prior to this? Prior to no, this was, I believe was the first search, at least in this time frame. Okay. That uh, Ned Schneider appeared in in Chad's Google searches. Okay, so at that point, we can't make any assumptions, obviously, right? No. Okay, but we do know that, as far as you're concerned, on the twenty eighth of January two thousand nineteen, somehow Chad Daybell learned about the topic of Ned Schneider and decided to do a Google search and see what that was all about, right? Objection, Your Honor. Misstates the testimony. Overruled. You can answer. I don't know if he learned of it or if he was doing searches. He did searches for various individuals pretty frequently. Right. This is the only one that we found that had connection to other pieces of evidence in the case. And, and, you, and you just led into my next question, and thank you for doing that. Yeah. Because when I reviewed all of this evidence, I saw that it was not uncommon when a topic came up for someone who was using that computer to do a search on, on a number of different topics. That would be fair, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Okay. So if he were to learn about the name Ned Schneider, it would be consistent with his or whoever was using that computer to, to Google it and see what it was all about. Would that be fair? Potentially. I can't speak of when he learned that name or if he was searching okay. it like he was a lot of other names. I'm not sure the right. the order of that, no. But his history shows that uh, there there's a lot of, of inquiry into various names, various topics, and that was something that was going on that computer quite frequently. Hundreds of th thousands of, of searches, right? Certainly lots of searches, yes. Right, right. And then we go down to Malachite, and we don't know where he got the name Malachite from, but then he started searching that as well, right? Correct. And then he got to Hiplos, and, and we don't know what the story is on Hiplos, but he typed in that name, so he must have got the name from somewhere and, and, and started as that, right? Correct. And then you get down to 719 of 2019. Now, 
when you say you surprise someone with accusations, we don't know who typed that in, right? Again, somebody, I can't say specifically, but somebody with access to the chad.daybell at gmail.com account. So it could be someone's trying to learn about how you react when a spouse finds out that you're cheating on her, right? Yes, it could be. Okay. And we don't know who did the South Southwest wind and what is the definition of that, right? Again, all I can say is it was somebody with access to that account. Right. And when you're talking about the day before uh, the accusation is, or the uh, the prosecutors uh, claiming that may have been the day that Hiley Ryan was put in the ground on 9-9, but you're also aware that on 9-9, Chad Daybell sent an email to his wife at the time, Tammy Daybell, and said, I'm going to burn some limbs in the backyard the day before, the next day, right? I believe that that text message was sent on the 9th that he said he right. wanted to burn, yes, burn yeah. limbs, yeah. Right. So on the 8th, he's checking the wind, and on the 9th, he sends an email to his wife saying, I'm going to burn some limbs in the backyard, right? Correct. Okay. And then um, Rhode Island area code. Now, you don't know what kind of phones we're dealing with. Um, these aren't like track phones, are they? Or do you know what kind of phones these are? I believe they, they might actually be track phones. Go ahead. No, that's... <laughs> oh, you believe they are all track phones, right? I don't remember off the top of my head. I mean, I, so a track phone is kind of a provider. So if you're asking, like, is it an iPhone or an Android? I'm not... Right. Yeah. But the track phone, the way that works, and, and, and if you don't know, please tell me if you don't have knowledge of this, but the way the track phone works is you buy the phone for a period of 90 days, it expires, and you could either buy another phone rather inexpensively, or you have to buy the the adding the minutes thing, and, and there's no real discernible difference in the cost, right? Correct. Um, yeah, you can keep the phone and change the number, correct? Right. Or you can just get a different phone and, and same thing, and you buy that at... Uh, I don't want to give anybody publicity, but large retail stores that sell a lot of groceries and other things, right? Yes. You know what we're talking yes. about. Okay. So if you're having an affair with somebody and you don't want to get discovered that you're having this affair with another woman while you're still married, it wouldn't be illogical for you to buy a number of phones. And as the phones expire, you just buy another phone to sort of protect yourself from being discovered that you're having this affair. Would that be fair? Uh, correct. I mean, in this okay. situation, he's not buying phones. It's change, it, It's the same phone. The IMEI number stayed the same on all of them. Right. So the device didn't change, but the phone number did. Yes. Okay. Same idea. So that that would be, he's trying, it's possible that what he's trying to do is he's trying to cover up the fact that he doesn't want to be discovered by his wife that he's uh, cheating on her, right? Correct. Okay. And Judge, if I can... Um, If I can um, ask the court again the number for the summary of search activity with Lori Va Lolly time with Lori Vallow, what that exhibit was again? It's one eight four a. If I have permission, Judge, may I have permission to to publish? You can publish that page, which is a printed copy of the PowerPoint presentation. So again, we see the subject of Malachite and, and uh, whoever is on lolly time, whether it's Lori Valor or, or whatever, is, is doing that, correct? Correct. Now, this is what is, is interesting to me on 721 of 2019. Okay. Objection, Your Honor. Again, there's a narrative. I'd move to strike and counsel and ask that he ask a question. Yeah. I'll uh, ask him. It is sustained. And Mr. Pryor, uh, please refrain from that. It's okay. just questions. All right. So, um, 721 of 2019, and you, I, my, my notes seem to indicate that you said that was a short time after Lori Vallow and Alex Cox murdered Charles Vallow. Is that fair? Yes, that would have been approximately 10 days after Charles's death. Okay. And prior to Lori Vallow moving to Idaho, correct? That's correct. Okay, so you know from the facts, and you you familiarized yourself with the, the the Charles Vallow case, right? That's correct. 
And you know from the facts that at the time Charles Vallow was murdered, Lori Vallow was there, wasn't she? At, at approximately the same time. I don't know if, I don't know the exact timing. I know she left right. at a certain point, but I don't know exactly the time frame. Yes. Well, you know that after the, after he, after the murder that Lori Vallow was interviewed in front of the house right after the murder. That's correct. Yes. You also know that she left a little bit of time because prior to the murder, Tylee Ryan was present and so was JJ Vallow at the time or at around the circumstances relating to the murder of Charles Vallow. Correct. Correct. So it seems then that at least Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow would have knowledge or at least information as it relates to the murder of Charles Vallow. Would that seem logical? Yes, it would. Okay. So if someone's looking and realizing that their children witnessed the murder of their father by their own brother, that's a motive for a number of things, right? I suppose. Okay. It's also an emotive on 721 of 2019 to come up with a reason to get rid of a child if that child witnessed the murder of their stepfather, correct? Uh, potentially. Okay. Potentially? I, I don't know if they saw that. I believe that Lori and the children left. There's, I think, if, if I understand right, there's a bit of discrepancy about if the kids were actually there right. to witness the shooting. But I, I thought that they left prior to the actual shooting. Well, you but they saw, they listened to the, there was an argument, yes. And, and there's a discussion because part of the FBI and the officers down there interviewed witnesses who suggested both sides of that uh, issue, correct? Correct. I don't know if we know. I mean, Tylee obviously isn't here to ask, so we're not sure what exactly she saw at the time. Yeah. So we don't know what JJ saw. We don't know what Tylee saw because the evidence uh, goes both ways in terms of what exactly did they see in regards to the murder of Charles Vallow, right? I believe Tylee was interviewed and I don't recall what her interview stated, Okay. but um, I don't remember about JJ. Okay. But you also know that one of Tylee's very close friends was interviewed and provided information about what Tylee said as well, right? Uh, I don't remember that, but that, okay. that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. So then that's why there's some discussion because we don't know exactly what, where Tylee was when Dalex Cox murdered Charles Vallow, right? Correct. Okay. So Lori Vallow, before she comes to Idaho on 721 of 2019, searches a life insurance policy for her children. Okay. Now there's no equal discussion by, I didn't see it and I wouldn't look at the stuff. I didn't see anything where Chad Daybell talked about life insurance for the children. He didn't, did he? No, sir. And there's no email or search on let's kill two kids, right? By Chad Daybell? Uh, no. Okay. And would you agree with me that um, part of the, the, the rationale of bringing up Hiplos and, and James and Elena is because of the religious connotation, right? Um, not necessarily the religious connotation. It just provides some context in other evidence because of the aliases. And it, it gets complicated with the okay. names that they call each other. Right. So to see that they're being searched by these individuals and to provide context for later of okay. where these where these names are coming from. Okay. Now So we have some references to religion, calling each other religious names. And, and you're aware that both of these folks have uh, strong religious beliefs. Yes, sir. And you're aware Melanie Gibb has strong religious beliefs. Yes, sir. David Warwick has strong religious beliefs. Yes, sir. Z Zaluma Pastenas, Alex's wife, strong religious beliefs. Yes. In fact, the circle of all these people, there's, there's repeated references to religion, right? Absolutely. Strong references to religion. Yes. Okay. So I guess what I'm kind of wondering, is it a bigger motive to kill two kids by their mother and brother to cover up the murder of a fourth husband? Or is it because they killed the kids because Chad, Lori, Melanie Gibb, and David Warwick 
and Zaluma Pastenas have strong religious beliefs. Which one is a greater motive to murder children? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Sustained. Nine thirty of two thousand and nineteen. How to get the back seat out of a Jeep, and that's Lori Vallow, right? Yes, sir. There's nothing about Chad Daybell trying to figure out how to get uh, the back seat out of a Jeep, right? No, sir. And I guess if a girlfriend asks you to help me get a tire because uh, somebody wants to use the Jeep, that would that would explain why Chad was helping his girlfriend load and unload a tire, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Gilbert, Arizona News on the day that Brandon Boudreau, and, and you've previously testified that Brandon Boudreau, uh, Chad Daybell has nothing, is not criminally implicated in anything with Brandon Boudreau, correct? He's not being charged, correct, sir. He's what? He's not being charged. Right, in not being correct. charged, yes. not being pursued for anything for any reason. But Objection, Your Honor. That misstates the testimony. Uh, sustained. And again, counsel, try to let the witness finish her response before you get into another question, please. Your Honor, and I would move to strike counsel's last statement. I'll strike that. I'll instruct the jurors not to consider that last uh, statement. Okay. So your your comment is you, uh, Chad Dable has not been charged. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Did you see a likewise Google search? on Chad Daybell's Google account that talked about Gilbert, Arizona on that day? Not that I recall. Okay. And then you're aware that um, that on 10 of 2019, are you aware that Lori Vallow was in Hawaii by herself with a friend? Yes. And you were aware that her friend was Audrey? I yes, uh, Audrey and maybe uh, Melanie Boudreau. I know they there was some shuffling there, but I don't remember the exact time frame. But right. yes, but they were uh, you know about ten twenty two of two thousand nineteen. Uh, Lori Vallow and a couple of friends went to Hawaii, and and I believe they were in Kauai. I remember. Is that fair? I don't remember what what island, but yes, that sounds fair. But you know, the purpose of them being there was to start the process of getting a wedding dress for Audrey Boudreau, right? I do not know that. No, sir. Okay. But you know the three of them were there, right? Yes. Okay. You just don't know why they were there and what they were doing there on that day, right? Yeah, it seemed like kind of a spontaneous. So if Audrey day. Boudreau was looking for a wedding dress on 1022 of 20, 2009. Your Honor, objection. Counsel stating facts, not in evidence. Uh, yeah, there's no Audrey Boudreau, Mr. Pryor. I'm sorry, Judge. Audrey Boudreau. I, I, uh, Barrett. Baratori, Judge. I'm sorry. I said Boudreaux. It's Baratori. I got the name wrong. No. Is that the correct name? Audrey Baratiero or Baratiero. Melanie Boudreaux. Yeah. I got them backwards. They both were in Hawaii, but yeah, I'm not with, sure which one you're with her. Correct. A different, I think some of them overlapped, but at different times, I don't know on 1022 exactly off the top of my head now. Right. And you don't know, and you don't have facts one way or the other as to whether or not on that particular day they were looking for wedding dresses, right? I don't, other than that search, no. Okay. Okay. Judge, I think that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Ms. Blake, Thank redirect. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll start with the last question. You were asked about Audrey Baratario and searching for wedding dresses. Are you aware if Audrey's married? At the time, I don't believe she was, no. Anything in your investigation or records you reviewed that showed she was engaged? I believe she'd mentioned, or I don't think she was actually married, no. I'm trying to remember now. I don't think she was. And you were asked about um, the attempted shooting of Brandon Boudreaux. And I think you indicated Chad has not been charged in that. Is that correct? That's my understanding, yes. And in relation to Charles Vallow, Chad has not been charged. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe so, yes. 
are you still part of any active investigation in those cases? Um, am I like, am I on to testify in those cases? Um, are you assisting in any further investigation if there is any going on? No. And those are being handled by agencies in Arizona. Is that correct? I believe so. Yes. So all you can say right now is that Chad hasn't been charged. Yeah. I haven't really followed that portion of it. No, other than what was included in this investigation. Yes. You were asked about those Ned Snyder searches. Are you aware through your investigation who designated Charles as Ned? Um, we, I guess, Lori calls Charles Ned is the first time where you sort of hear that on the body cam footage. Charles is relaying that uh, Lori refers to him as Ned. Um, I don't know where that name comes from, no. I don't know if she brought it up or if Chad gave her that name. I don't know how that worked. And the searches from Chad were being done around the same time Charles is reporting that Lori's calling him Ned Schneider. It's around the same time, yes. You were asked about the potential for someone else to use Chad's email to do some searches. Potentially, yes. Did you find any searches in... Um, related to that email, to Chad's email, regarding divorce or separation? Not that I recall. You were also asked about people changing phone numbers to hide an affair. Uh, yes. Are there, um, in your experience, do people involved in criminal activity also switch phone numbers? Yes. And then there was some talk about um, Melanie. Um, actually, let me back up. You were there was some extensive discussion regarding the killing of Charles Vallow and where JJ and Tylee were. Do you know where they were at the time Charles was actually shot? I I don't I don't believe they were there. Um, I believe the report said that Lori took the children to I think they went to Burger King or something. Um, but I don't know if if that was corroborated or not. And we talked about the phone attribution earlier. And with one of Chad's numbers, you'd made reference to attributing that number to him in part because of a mortuary call. Do you recall that? Yes. And that call to the mortuary, do you recall what day that took place? I believe it was July 11th, 2019. And when was Charles killed? The same day. And do you know where the mortuary was located that he placed that call to? In Arizona, but I don't remember which city. And Charles was killed in Arizona? That's correct. Then you were asked quite a bit about Melanie Gibb and David Warwick. Their names came up at least. Is that fair? Yes. Did Melanie, through your investigation, do you, did you determine whether... Or was there anything to indicate Melanie Gibb or David Warwick profited from JJ's death? Judge objection goes beyond the scope. Overruled. I did not learn of anything why they would benefit from JJ's death now. Thank you. I have nothing further. All right. I don't believe that opened any doors for additional recross. Did you have anything, Mr. Pryor? Judge, I would have a couple subjects, but if the court's determination is that there's nothing open for recross, I'll I'll defer to the court's wisdom. All right. Uh, that'll conclude then the testimony of this witness.